Very good morning, very good evening, everyone. Uh, for uh, It's your pleasure that you are attending this webinar on NCCF's Trees Outside Forest Certification Standard. This is a PFC uh, public consultation webinar. My name is Hubert Inheiser. I'm a technical officer at PFC International, and it's my pleasure to be your host today uh, on this webinar. We have uh, a very short agenda, but uh, with a very rich content uh, prepared you, uh, for you today. Uh, I will give a, a brief introduction about PFC uh, International uh, for those who are not that uh, familiar uh, with the PFC and the PFC family. Uh, and then the focus and the main topic uh, for today uh, is the, the presentation on the NCCF's Trees Outside Forest Certification Standard. NCCF stands for Network for Certification and Conservation of Forests, which is a national governing body of PEFC in India. And after the presentations delivered uh, by the NCCF uh, team, that we will have time, of course, for the audience for questions and answers. And with this, um, allow me to start the introduction of PEFC International. The acronym stands for Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification System. We are uh, an alliance of independent national forest certification systems under the umbrella of PFC International. Uh, these national forest certification systems are all based on PFC sustainability benchmark standards and international standards. This is a voluntary mechanism promoting sustainable forest management through independent third-party certification. We are very proud that we are the world's largest forest certification system and provider of free quarters of the world's certified and sustainably managed forest. On this map, you can see our global coverage. Uh, this map shows you our 55 members which covers a total area of 330 million hectares of forest through 49 endorsed certification schemes. Now the NCCF's uh, trees uh, outside forest certification standard was submitted uh, already in 2020 for assessment, but unfortunately like many other uh, issues or processes around the world. Uh, this was also affected by the COVID-19 unfortunate impacts. Uh, I'm sure that uh, our Indian team will give you explanation further uh, on this subject as well. Um, but we are very happy that we reached this stage that we are able to start the assessment now. The PFC assessment will be carried out by an independent assessor who is not yet uh, being appointed. And uh, this uh, webinar is also part uh, of the international public consultation. The other element what we use as part of the assessment is a 60 days uh, international public consultation. Here you can find the link, which I encourage everyone to visit. And on this link, you can have access to the complete documentation of the Indian Trees Outside Forest Certification Standard. All the comments which are submitted through this platform to PFC International during these 60 days will be considered by the assessor in the assessment report. I'm glad to announce that we uh, opened this 60 days public consultation period today on 27th of September, and the public consultation will be open until 25 of November. So again, everybody is welcome to visit our website and find out more in details about the trees outside for a certification standard in India. And with this very short uh, uh, introduction, uh, I would like now to uh, ask, uh, from uh, NCCF, the first speaker who will deliver his uh, opening uh, remarks. 
who is the Director General of NCCF, uh, Ashir Kuman Shtrivashtava. Uh, sir, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, please unmute your microphone. Unmute. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Hubert, for that generous introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I thank the PFC for commencing the process of endorsement of NCCF's trees outside forest certification standard by launching this international public consultation webinar. This is my privilege to extend a warm welcome to the participants across the globe for sparing their valuable time and attending this public consultation. I am particularly grateful to Mr. Hubert Inheiser and his team from PFC for pre-check of the documentation submitted by NCCF for endorsement and facilitating the launch of this important consultation. We are concerned that PFC has had many applications for assessment and appreciate the priority consideration given to NCCF's TOF standard. There had been delay on our part in completion of the documentation due to prolonged and acute COVID-19 situation in India as it occurred everywhere in the world. And that adversely impacted our normal functioning. NCCF's TOF scheme is unique in this part of the world and its endorsement by PEFC will certainly bring the much needed recognition to the wood sector by promoting sustainability of TOF resources, enhancing income of the tree growers and ensuring better markets and price premium for the certified products. The stakeholders are actively uh, looking for PEFC's endorsement for early operationalization of this certification scheme. My, soon, uh, my senior colleagues, Dr. Devend Pandey and Mr. A.K. Bansal, who are eminent experts in forestry, environmental management, and certification matters, would be making detailed presentations on NCCF's TOF standard and a facilitative risk assessment tool uh, developed by us. Dr. Devend Pandey is, is chairing the NCCF's standard development group for trees outside forest standard. And Mr. A.K. Bansal is chairpersons, promotions, communications, and advocacy group of NCCF, and also chairing the standard development group of non-wood forest resources. I hope it will be an informative webinar for the distinguished participants and we would be happy to answer your queries during the question and answer session. I now request Dr. Devend Pandey to present the NCCF Trees Outside Forest Standard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Srivastava, for this very important and covering all aspects of the introductory remark. I am very thankful to Mr. Hubert and the PEFC for giving us this opportunity to make a presentation of the TOF, the exercise which took a quite a long time for us. Uh, I would first like to upload the, the slide, uh, sharing a screen. Is it visible now to everybody? Looks perfect, thank you. So with this, I think I skip this because you already know. I, I think you are also aware about uh, that, uh, what is NCCF and uh, um, it is working on both. Uh, let me first minimize this. It is working. <clears throat> a network of professionals and experts working for policy, advocacy, conservation, environment, and natural resources through development of globally benchmarked sustainability standards and endeavoring to 
their large scale application through promotion, awareness, raising and capacity development of stakeholders. Uh, in the presentation, it includes uh, forestry context in India as uh, outlined by the uh, initially by PEFC, then NCCF's FM standard, which was endorsed by PEFC around three years ago, then rationale to develop its TOF standard, standard setting process, TOF certification standard, and the, finally, the risk assessment tool, which my other colleague, Mr. A.K. Bansar, will make presentation. Uh, forestry context in India. India is, you know, seventh largest country in the world with the total geographical area about 328 million square kilometer, total population 1.38 billion. The, and uh, population density is very dense. This is the latest report. It's uh, not Indian statistics, but I think we are reaching more or less to the similar statistics very soon in 2021, when the census is going to be completed. The forest cover, the major land use consists of the forest, net zone area and agriculture, which is 44%. And the other land uses, which includes wasteland, development area, roads, railway tracks, settlements, all this constitute around 35%. The important point to be pondered over in the tree outside forest is 85% of the land holding in India are of very small and marginal farmers. I think this point is important here. The small and marginal farmers in context of India is maybe the people who are having small farmers means not more than two hectare and marginal farmers means maybe very small area, 0.1 hectare or so. India's forest and tree cover is, uh, you know, it's 10th position accounting for 2% of the total forest of the world. As per the India's state of forest report 2019, forest cover is 21%. And most of the forests are owned by the government. Tree cover, which is, part of the outside forest, tree outside forest is 9.5 million. And uh, forest and tree cover constitute around 80 million, which is 24.3 or 24.4% of the geographic area. Per capita forest area of the country is very low. It's just, you can say 500 square meter per capita. Around 300 million people live in and around the forest. So one can see what is the extent of pressure on the forest. India's forests have rich biodiversity due to extremely diverse uh, geographic uh, conditions uh, with uh, landscape ranging from snow-capped mountains in the Himalayas to deserts of Rajasthan, plain areas, hills are there, plateaus are there, and the long coastal line of the uh, of the country is around 7,000 kilometers. So this is the geographic description. India is one of the 17th mega diverse country with four global biodiversity hotspots. The and the, it is very rich both in flora and fauna. There are 16 major forest types which have been identified by the. Indian forestry experts, but just listing the few one, which are major one, you can say tropical wet evergreen forest, tropical moist and dry deciduous forest, tropical dry thorny forest, subtropical temperate, which is lying in the Himalayan region, and the coastal mangroves more along the sea coast areas and also the larger rivers. The management of India's forest is uh, very important because uh, the India's forest lies in the concurrent list of the Indian constitution. So both there is a national and a state level uh, management. The National Ministry of Environment and Forest is mainly responsible for framing national policies, laws, providing uh, partial financial support, and also monitoring overall 
whereas the major responsibility to protect, conserve, manage, and develop forest and wildlife lies with the states and union territories. Historically, India's forests uh, have been managed uh, by preparing working plans. It's important. It's not now that uh, we are managing using the standards, but management has been there, but the only thing it was not inclusive of everything. There has been man management more for the sustained yield and also for the environmental aspects. Uh, the management plan is prepared for a period of 10 years and it is done at the forest division level, which comprises an area of 1,000 square kilometer. The, the managed plan is guided by the National Working Plan Code since beginning and uh, the, the, this new recent working plan, which was in 2014, it lays emphasis also on the assessment of forest management through forest certification scheme. This is an addition to the, the earlier working plans. Now coming back to the endorsement, uh, and PEFC has already endorsed the NCC of forest management, which consisted of you know the six themes, and uh, the it, the process was initiated in January 2015 and completed in. Uh, September 2017, it took more than uh, two and a half years. Uh, the themes consist of the legality, land tenure, written forest management plan and its implementation, periodic review, impact of the forest management activity in social, economic, environmental affairs, economic viability, uh, social response, socially responsible forest management, social and community rights relationship, ecological integrity. So all aspects, what the, the world in fact looking after, especially the certification standards, um, which are globally accepted, all these points have been uh, taken into consideration while developing. This was the certificate which was endorsed, which is the only uh, available Indian scheme certificate. This is important to be noted here. Uh, we have the PEFC and FSC schemes also being implemented, in, but the Indian scheme is only the what has been endorsed by PEFC, the NCCF PEFC Forest Management Certification Scheme. Uh, this scheme is being used by many states for certification in India. Uh, the points which as I emphasize, which has been included in preparation of the certification of the forest management is rights of the local communities have been taken care of workers. So social aspects, uh, keeping in view the ILO convention, welfare and health and safety of the people, workers, staff, environmental safeguards, mitigation. This have been taken into account, periodic monitoring, evaluation, assessment independently uh, by third party. The brand image, global recognition is the brand image in fact, and ensures active engagement of stakeholder in planning, implementation, and monitoring of the evaluation. Uh, coming back to the tree outside forest, I think it's important that what is the rationale behind the certification. Despite a huge production of timber from tree outside, there is no sustainability uh, adherence uh, system as well as a certification is standard for this resource. As a result, Indian manufacturers producing uh, and producers using TUF raw material are unable to tap the global market and TUF value added products are not able to fetch the desired price. Farmers who are mostly who hold, who are mostly the marginal and the small farmers uh, who hold the resource are already in the you know, margin of the economy. They also get adversely affected because they could get better price of their the, the timber which they produce from their farms. Being an informal and private sector, there's a lack of uniformity in silvicultural management uh, and uh, other operational practices. Thus, while developing NCCFTO certification scheme, effort has been kept 
uh, made to globally align the standard with other certification programs and make uh, Indian forest fiber based industry complete to compete globally. Uh, these are the other factors I think uh, which you, we all perhaps know that uh, there is a legal requirement, international policy shift is toward the sustainability certification. That's why any produce which comes from the country, it has to follow certain uh, uh, legal requirements. The forest lines enforcement in the government, trade, due diligence also needed under the EU timber regulation due care of the U.S. Lessee Act is also required. So these are the certain uh, requirements uh, globally now uh, has uh, rather made up the TUF that if we want to go globally compete, then there is a need for certification of the tree uh, product. This is a very uh, important slide for all of us that the annual timber production from forest which constitute the bulk of the area of you know the the forest resource it's just three million because the emphasis in india is more for conservation and protection and environmental and ecological factors so the in fact the harvest of the timber from the natural forest is much more annual import of the timber is around six million but production of the timber from the outside forest is 85 million. It's a big chunk of the wood coming from, most of it is coming from the tree. Of, that's why it is essential that uh, certification should be, be done. The definition of the certification is, uh, TUF definition is, all trees growing outside recorded forest area are defined as trees outside forest. Here, Recorded forest area includes reserve forest, protected forest, and unclassed forest. As I gave one figure that uh, around more than 21% is under the forest and only little area under the tree out forest. But tree out forest, they produce much bigger amount, most of the timber. Tree outside, uh, TUF can occur in the form of block, linear, scattered, stratum in urban or rural areas. So these all areas are uh, included in tree outside forest. Trees grown in social forestry also, linear plantations along road, railway, and canal, irrespective of the recorded forest. They also fall in the category of the uh, um, NCCF implementation certification scheme. Ownership generally, of the tree outside forest because it is all coming from farmers is with the, mostly from the farmer in the private sector or partly in the community and a very small quantity with the government because those which is coming and along the roadside that falls in the that is owned by the government so tuf contributes more than 85 i have written 85 percent but it's much more than that the wood consumed in india is coming from the outside forest these are some pictures, the urban areas, block plantations, scattered trees and farmland, and the trees on the highways, they all form the part of the tree outside forest resource. The standard setting process, I think uh, the development of the standard is based on the standard setting document developed by standardizing body following the international benchmarking standard. It takes uh, place through an open, transparent, consultative, or consensus-based process that includes a broad range of the national stakeholders. I will also give you a list of the national stakeholders uh, which, are, which comprise uh, the different sections of the society. Uh, the steps involved are that mapping of the stakeholder, announcement of the stakeholder, uh, a standard setting, invite stakeholders, create a working group, then working group committees, then we have the standard development group, we have the public consultation, pilot testing, consensus building on final draft, 
and formal approval of the standard and then the publication. That is many steps except for the endorsement by PFC is there, completed. Um, and this is the NCC of value. As I said, the stakeholder includes the businessmen, the youth, local authorities, NGO institutes, the trade unions. It follows multi-stakeholder engagement process in all uh, standard development activities. The stakeholders are mapped, taking into uh, the reference from the UN Agenda 21, the stakeholder category. This is how, what, how it has been listed and includes also the state forest department, resource managers, research and development organization, civil society, professionals, and industries. This is a little more detailed list of the stakeholders. You can see which has been used in case of uh, the TF. You find the businessman industries, ITC, Century, Plywood, Hindustan Paper, similarly non-governmental organizations, WWF, Center for Science and Environment, Indian Bamboo Resource, Uthan Trust, Development Alternatives, Government Department, which are concerned with this Ministry of Agriculture, then the Haryana Forest Department, UP Forest Department, Punjab Forest Corporation, Andaman Nicobari Islands, National Highway Authorities, then international stakeholders, the CRAF, and uh, you find then scientific organizations are many. This is just to give you some steps, I think uh, it is important. Uh, stakeholder mapping, I mean, it is already explained in the previous slide. I'll go move to next. The standard development has, uh, the, these are the milestones which are important. It was initiated in June, 2016 and has been completed in 2019. Then there has been 17 practical working group meetings, four standard development group meetings, consultative meeting, consultative field widgets, consultation in the field widgets, and stakeholder consultation workshops, there are two. Pilot testing was also done in four diverse sites across the country. The number of the stakeholders in the standard development group was around 45, and five, the technical core group, which was responsible for drafting the minutes and meeting more frequently to uh, complete the write-up part. NCCF is important that NCCF was a part of the PEFC pilot project and was constantly engaged with uh, PEFC International. These are some photographs. I think it's, uh, this is the meeting, SP meeting, this is also SDG meeting. This is extended uh, uh, meeting uh, of the stakeholder when I think uh, some PFC member Sarah has perhaps visited India in, in January 2018. Uh, then we have the public consultation meeting also here. Uh, one was in May 2018 and the other was also in subsequently in June. Two public consultation workshop and we received so many 84 comments during the public consultation and the observations also, which has been incorporated. So it's a very, very detailed exercise and the, uh, you know, which was followed for a period of more than three years. This is the pilot testing situation. I mean, we visited the number of fields I can give you some more details on it. where are the areas which has been visited, the, how they were selected, both in agroforestry, linear plantation, and, and also the urban forest. <coughs> All this was covered during the pilot testing. 
the four sides, uh, who were the people who were involved in the pilot uh, testing uh, exercise. Uh, you can see also the name, the timeline when it was done. It's a very, very elaborate exercise. The assessor's team, the ICFRE, other stakeholders which were involved in the field process. So this is all about uh, the how this whole setting was done, preparation of the standard. The consensus building then was the last. The, it was put up, the final draft, final meeting oh, took place in 16 February before the SDG. And then final draft for approval was submitted to the governing body of the NCCF, which was approved on 10th August, 2019. I'll give you some uh, details that uh, compare to the FM standard, uh, the tree outside forest standard, which has been developed. It is much simpler. If you just compare here, the, the criteria indicators developed for the forest management because a lot of other conditions are to be uh, included here. Here you find criteria 59 and indicators 259. In case of the tree outside forest, uh, although we have not compromised with the conditions uh, which are essential for the global alignment of the standard, but keeping in view the, the, the distribution of the tree outside forest, in India with small farmers and a small area. And uh, the, uh, the conditions which they have to fulfill, the role was tree outside forest has to fulfill. We have reduced the number to a great extent without compromising with the, the uh, global uh, you know, standard process. The criteria here in instead of 59, you find 28 indicators 98. And in case of the non-block linear plantation where the trees are alone in one line, there, there is a further reduction because there is no need for the preparation of management plan for few trees which are standing. So that's how, and there, are, there were other uh, reductions in the number of the criteria and indicators applicable to such isolated stand, uh, isolated and trees and linear plantations, you will find that the criteria come, came down to 16 and indicators only 48. Then comes the, the implementation uh, part of the TUF. The standard is purely voluntary. I think we all know that because it is falling firstly in the private sector and uh, Maybe some farmers who can't afford, who can't join it, they, if they can join, it's good. They will get the benefit of it. It is for the more for the benefit of the tree growers interested in the validation through certification. Uh, TF certification will be carried out by notified certification body, CV. I think it's the third party, what you call. To reduce the certification cost, especially of the marginal and the medium and small holding farmers. The following strategy has been proposed in the implementation. What you call the industry and uh, supplier driven means industry will take the responsibility for the certification. Similarly, there could be cooperative and federation where the cooperatives can be formed by the farmers some NGOs can help, some federation can come there so that the cost of certification on the farmers who are um, very small farmers with low income, they can, they are not much burden and they get benefit really of the certification. Then owners managing urban forests, maybe some of the municipalities managing, some where the development authorities in the urban areas managing, they, can also they will take up the 
the responsibility for certification of the tree outside forest, especially the urban forest. Uh, for example, roadside plantations, they could, they could be certified by the National Highway Authority. They can take the responsibility. This is the uh, industry and supply. These are the, I mean, the areas where the industrians can take the major role. They are already playing major role in India. In fact, the paper mills, they have taken the, already making the farmers uh, join this. And uh, then there are cooperative federations where the group of farmers will be farming the cooperatives. And as I said, owners managing it, uh, the urban trees and the roadside plantations. Uh, using the risk assessment tool, I think here I would like to just clarify that uh, we have proposed to ex expedite rather uh, facilitate the certification of such trees which are falling in the, you know, they are uh, single tree and falling in a region where there is a lot of, uh, you know, documents available. So in that case, if that situation exists, certification becomes much easier for the third party to do it. So instead of the third party visiting the farmer, they can do it uh, uh, if we apply this risk assessment tool, and uh, here I would now request uh, my friend, Mr. Bansal, to take on the presentation who would explain the risk assessment tool in much detail. Over to Mr. Bansal. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pandey. Uh, next slide, please. Now, as uh, Dr. Pandey, next slide, please. As mm -hmm. Dr. Pandey has explained, uh, this the purpose of the risk assessment tool is, is actually to further expedite the process without compromising the quality of the certification. Uh, because in India, what is happening, uh, the agroforestry and palm forestry is being promoted by the government, where a small and marginal farmers plant uh, generally single or few species in the industrial catchments. Mm -hmm. And the industries are also in the MSME, that is micro, medium, and uh, small enterprises. So the, we don't have large industries working in the wood-based wood industry sector. So this risk assessment tool has been evolved uh, under the TOF standard, especially to facilitate the certification of such areas. Next one, please. The, the risk is developed, uh, the, the, what is proposed is that through a risk assessment tool, some specified geographical regions for one species would be pre-assessed for conformance with respect to the TF standard. And uh, the risk would be divided, in, uh, categorized in three categories, low, medium, and high. And here the geographical region uh, we mean, the, in the context of red refers to a small uh, or landscape areas within a state either a part of the district or maybe a number of districts, but generally within a state, the geography region where one species is getting planted. And this risk assessment study is to be carried out for this, for a designated geography region would be once done for a period of five years. However, if there are significant or major changes in the administrative and social or environmental situations, which will be assessed by the NCCF, then the risk assessment may be revised before the period of five years even. Next one, please. Next. Categorization. Should I share from my screen? Uh so you can do that, sir. I think there is. I, I, I'll try to. <clears throat> the the here the role of uh, am I am, is the my screen visible? Yes. Yes, but please make it full screen. Yeah, yeah. It is okay now? No. 
I'm sorry, I got uh, disconnected. I'm rejoining. But we can hear you, sir. I, you can even hear me, but I am not able to show the screen. Nah? The screen is visible. Your, my screen is visible. Yes, yes. But I think I am not able to. Any, anyway, I'll, I'll continue to. I'm sorry for this uh, technical glitch. So the, 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 there is a specific role of NCCF uh, in the section bodies. The risk assessment tool is developed and owned by NCCF. And the risk assessment is to be done by NCCF through a notified uh, section body. And uh, the notified CB while doing the risk assessment shall also collect the geographical area coordinates of the polygons of the sites and provide to NCCF. Are you able to see my screen? I'm yeah. showing your screen now. Please let yeah. me know when I should change the slide. Thank you. Yeah. Next one, please. Now, hmm. Next one, please. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Devendra Pandey is sharing the screen. Oh, what is that? There is some uh, some issue. I think two persons are sharing. Dr. Pandey, up uh, screen must share. Kijiye. Uh, now, Mr. Hubert is sharing the screen. Uh, Mr. Hubert, please continue sharing the screen. Yes. Yeah. So th this is the uh, when. Uh, the, the risk assessment tool, what has been done is that the, the uh, taking from the TUF is mm -hmm. the there are a set of questions which have been evolved covering all the six themes into in with the TUF standard. And there are a total of 64 questions that has been developed. And this is the risk score guiding matrix for each question. Now, in response to each question, when a certain body does the assessment, depending upon the frequency and the risk of the occurrence uh, of a, a non-conformance or conformance, the, a, the uh, answer to a question we scored in the uh, pattern of one to five, one being uh, the high score being five. The next one, please. The, the, this is the score that if the score is zero, that means there is a uh, probability of total conformance to the TF standard. And if the score comes to five, it shows a very high risk that means the, the chances of non-conformance are more in that particular question. Next one, please. Now, depending upon uh, the individual scores, the, the total score will be computed for the entire set of questions in the risk assessment tool, which is called the harmonized overall score. If the overall score is within the range of zero to 30, we call it that the area is low risk. That means there are all the there are chances that there is a conformance to the TOF standard in that particular region. If the median score is between 31 to 70, there is a medium risk level. And if the score comes to above 70, then the, the, the risk is very high. That means the conformance to the TOF standard is rather low in that particular region. Next one, please. Now, this is uh, since all the questions uh, do not have uniform impact on the overall score, we have created a system of impact factors. Whereas in theme A, the questions related to theme A, that is the legality aspects, have been given an impact factor of two. That means whatever is the score, it will be multiplied by two to get the score because the legal aspects are paramount. No, no uh, sort of non conformance can be tolerated as far as the legality, various legality aspects are concerned. The next level is that of forest management system. That means the management plan, the available, and that has been provided a score of 1.5. In all other uh, themes, C, D, E, F, the risk assessment, uh, the, in, in the impact factor has been taken to be one. Now, these impact factors are to be multiplied by the scores of individual questions to get the scores. And that is how we get the scores of individual questions and which is computed into a overall score that is the harmonized score. Next one, please. The, as I told earlier, 
the risk assessment study will be applicable in a specified geographical region within a state or a UT with respect to selected single tree species, which is generally being planted in those areas. And for that, there is an industrial demand. Now, for getting uh, the, the area, for getting the timber produced from such areas into the COC chain, uh, the, the, we, we propose that uh, from the low risk areas, the, when the timber is uh, sourced from the low risk area, it will be taken into the supply chain of the PFC COC as the certified input material. However, the, the areas, uh, if there are block areas which are more than five hectares, uh, they are not uh, of individual holdings, they will not qualify for the benefit of in the, for the risk assessment tool and they have to go in for regular certification under the TOF standard. This is because the five hectare area is, is a sufficiently sized area so that it, the complexities of management of a forest comes into picture. Uh, that is how this limit has been arrived at that five hectares of more of individual holding would be treated as, uh, will be not covered under the risk assessment tool and they will have to be certified separately. Next one, please. Now, this is the process of the TUF certification process using the risk assessment tool. There has to be an application by a client who is having COC certification. The application would be reviewed by the NCCF and NCCF uh, will select uh, one of the uh, cert uh, certified body for doing the risk assessment using the transparent process. And the risk assessment study would be done by that certification body for a very well-defined scope. That means the specified region and a species. The risk assessment uh, study result, as I told earlier, will uh, come out, the areas will come out into low risk, medium risk, or high risk. In the case of low risk, it is proposed that there will be no third party audit because there, is, there are all the indications through the assessment that the for that particular species, there is a compliance to, there is a conformance to the provisions of the TOF standard. So there is no third party audit provided for. This will facilitate that such timber from low risk areas can directly enter into the medium as in small industries. They can source it from them and enter as a certified material as input into the CPFC chain of custody. In the case uh, where the risk is found to be medium, it is proposed that there would be third party audit in every alternate year. That means the second, fourth and fifth year of the five year certification cycle. But if the risk uh, assessment finds the risk to be high, then the third party audit uh, would be done annually as the, done in the TUF standard. Next one, please. The, the, from the low risk area, let's say the prime objective is that uh, the MSME sectors, small industries should be able to source the material uh, from the low risk areas and get the benefit of certification. So the areas which are assessed as low risk will be treated as deemed certified until the risk designation is changed. Once it is done, it will be valid for five years, as I told earlier, unless there are uh, severe changes in the environmental, social or economic criteria. Now, organization sourcing crew products from the low risk areas will need to mandatorily have PFC COC certification before they can start using the PFC COC claim in respect of such species. And once it is available, the source material from low risk areas will enter into the input 100% uh, certified input material in COC. Fi and they will file an application by a designated NCCF certification portal along with a self declaration form. Uh, which uh, I, I show a little later, with all required documents, including the evidences of procurement and origin. These are the two important documents which will come into picture that from where the material is sourced, the evidence in respect of that, and from where it has actually been sourced, through, by whom, from whom, and from where. The, the self declaration form uh, uploaded by the client or the applicant would be reviewed by the NCCF of the self-assessment form and the evidence. And on the basis of that, the decision would be taken and a unique batch number would be provided and the approval will be given through the NCCF certification portal. So this is a totally an online system where the applicant would be able to file its document with the minimal documents along with a self-declaration form and the NCCF will provide approval along with a unique batch number. Uh, once that happens, the organization can use the material 
only after the NCCF's approval and, and they will be required to maintain the documents for a period of five years. Next one, please. In the medium risk area, as I told earlier, that uh, because the risk, the risk level is medium, what is proposed is that, that uh, the uh, alternative, every alternate year, the third party audit would be conducted uh, because the risk level is high. So the surveillance and research and audit would be done in alternate years. Next one, please. In the, in the case of high risk area, it is proposed that uh, the applicant will have to uh, will be required to obtain a, a NCCF PO certification following the process which has been provided in the standard through a, a uh, certification audit done by the certification body. Next one, please. This is a self depression template which is based upon ISO system of self depression based on ISO 17050 where the certain uh, minimal uh, documents would be required by to be filled in by the applicant. That means the sewer's name, address, why he is applying that, and the additional information in the form of source of origin, that is at serial number nine, source of origin document, sale invoice, transit document, payment slip bridge, et cetera. So these, these are the standard requirement through which the applicant will file a self-declaration and he will own the responsibility for providing the self-declaration. Next one, please. I think that is the end. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think uh, if, if you have any questions, uh, we like to, we, we welcome the questions and queries and we'll try to clarify the doubts, either me or Dr. Pandey. Uh, Mr. Hubert, I would just like to inform the uh, international gathering uh, that we also have uh, experts, Mr. Avni Verma, who drafted the forest management certification standard of NCCF that was endorsed by PFC. He's also in this meeting. Uh, Mr. Anil Jahuri, uh, chairperson of certification advisory group, is also attending. And Mr. Sachin Jain, founder of NCCF, is also attend attending the meeting. Some experts like uh, retired principal chief, conservator of forest, Jammu Kashmir, Mr. A.K. Singh, Dr. Rao, and uh, the drafting team for risk assessment tool. Uh, they are also present and uh, along with my senior, uh, my, my several colleagues from NCCF. So thank you for this time. And now the floor is open for questions and answers. Thank you very much for all the speakers and uh, also for Director General for uh, mentioning that we have a very, very strong team on the, on the call. So if there would be any questions, I'm sure mm -hmm. that none of the participants would leave the, the webinar without answers. Uh, however, just to be uh, mindful uh, with the fact that I think that there was a very detailed and uh, very informative presentation and uh, all the detailed documentation is available online on the PFC website. Uh, I would like to ask the audience to uh, focus on clarification questions, if there's any, uh, because again, the complete documentation is available for international public consultation until 25 of November. And with this, I open the floor if there is uh, any questions from the audience. Are there any suggestions? Can I, can I come? Ashish. Yes, sure, sir. Uh, I didn't see your hand raised, but uh, yes, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, ask the question. If you have video, please also turn this on. Thank you very much. Ask the question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hubert. I'm sorry I could raise the hand, uh, uh, but I thank you for. Connectivity problem. Unfortunately, I'm not able to hear the question. Is anybody no. is able? Yeah. No. Uh, no. Maybe until it reconnects. That uh, is there anybody else maybe with the with a question for the for the speakers? Well, in case not, uh, again, I think uh, it was very very detailed. So thank you very much again for both the speakers and director general for all the information provided. I do not see the previous participants uh, reconnecting. Uh, 
but I'm sure that uh, if the question will be put uh, to any of you through email and also to us, that we are more than happy to take this on board. Uh, with this, uh, I would like just to uh, make sure that we have the protocol in place. Uh, Director General, is there any closing remarks from your side? Yeah, Mr. Hubert, uh, thank you very much. Thanks to entire PFC team. We are so grateful to you and particularly to Mr. Ben Gunebar, Secretary General. Uh, he has been a great support to us and he has been expediting so many things uh, in the interest of uh, NCCF. NCCF has got the only Indian scheme of forest certification available in the country. And this, this tree outside forest certification is perhaps going to be a very unique scheme, not only in India, but in the entire world. Uh, with these words, I look forward for uh, an expeditious process for the endorsement of our application. And the PFC endorsement will certainly give a lot of value. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, that it is going to um, bring a, a huge benefits to the Indian stakeholders, particularly the wood-based industries. So there is a lot of hope among the wood-based industries. They are actively looking forward to operationalization of this scheme. And thank you very much for facilitating everything. <clears throat> Thank you so much for the very nice words. I can also just confirm that it's a really uh, honor and a pleasure to work with you and uh, also with the full team, which is very well prepared and technically very strong. And I'm very much looking forward for this successful outcome of this assessment. And I also would like to thank for all the participants who joined us today and dedicated the time for this uh, webinar. And uh, just to remind everyone that the documentation is available online until 25 of November, 2021. And with this, again, final thank for everybody. And I wish you a very nice rest of the day. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.